Thank you for joining us today to learn more about General Obligations Bonds and Propositions 441 and 442. We are here today to provide information about General Obligation Bonds Proposition 441 for Wildfire, Flood, and Wastewater Infrastructure and Proposition 442 for Rental and Home Ownership Opportunities. Some may be wondering how we selected the two bond measures. It began with City Council reviewing a list of unfunded capital needs in April of 2021, where they narrowed it down to three measures, infrastructure, climate action, and housing. They referred these three measures to a citizen bond committee for further consideration and a recommendation. The citizen bond committee was made up of 17 community members. They came together between November of 2021 through May of 2022 to learn more about each project, review community input, and make a recommendation. The Citizen Bond Committee's recommendation was presented to City Council on June 7th, and Council adopted two bond measures for infrastructure and housing. The infrastructure bond measure is an investment in wildfire suppression, stormwater flood mitigation, and wastewater treatment. While the housing bond measure will create rental and home ownership opportunities for Flagstaff residents. You will hear more details about these measures following the information about general obligation bonds. What are general obligation bonds? A general obligation bond, also known as a GO bond, is a method of debt financing available used by cities to fund large projects. In order to use GO bond financing, first the council must decide to add a ballot measure to a general election for voters to consider. Then the voters must approve the ballot measure to allow the city to utilize GO bond financing for those specific items in the measure. GO bonds authorizations allows the city to pledge secondary property taxes for repayment of debt that is issued. What is a secondary property tax? A secondary property tax is a levy assessed to property owners. That levy is part of the annual property tax bill provided by the county. Cities can only assess a secondary property levy if the voters approve a ballot measure. The annual levy can only be assessed for the amounts expected to be paid on principal, interest, and fees related to the GO bond debt. Since 2010, Voters approved five GO bond ballot measures for over $57 million. In 2010, voters approved the upgrades to the public safety communication system that were completed in 2012 and various street and utility improvements completed between 2011 and 2015. In 2012, voters approved funding for the forest health and water supply protection for our community. The project was able to bring in nearly $38 million in federal and state funds. Voters also approve funding to help guide a new core maintenance facility. With an additional $15 million in other funding sources, the facility was completed in 2018. In 2016, voters approved funding for a new municipal courthouse. With an additional $7 million in funding, the courthouse was completed in 2020. There is a state legal limit for how much geo bonds a city can have outstanding. The state limitations are based on a 20% and 6% limitation that is calculated off of assessed valuations of properties in taxing area. The City of Flagstaff taxing area has over $280 million in capacity to issue GO bonds and only if the voters approve that level. The City of Flagstaff has a policy to maintain a secondary property tax based on prior ballot measures that voters approved and the commitment made by the city to keep rates at or below what was presented. Recent ballot measures expected the rate to be at or below a rate of 0.8366. Due to paying off of debt over the last few years, the city was required to reduce the rate to 0.8000 and is based on existing geo bond obligations. Council provided direction to maintain the current rate with the upcoming ballot measures. If either ballot measures are approved, we intend to maintain at or below this rate in future years. The ballot measures being considered equal $77 million of the $100 million capacity to maintain the rate over the next 20 years. 
In the city district, there are several property classifications. One of the most common classifications is related to owner-occupied residential properties. This slide shows the estimated secondary property tax levy impact for this classification. For a property with a county assessor's valuation at $250,000, it is estimated that the property owner will pay an average of $140.05 per year for the 20-year GEO debt for a total of $2,801.03. The table provides an example of how the allocation of the tax levy compared to the two propositions the voters will decide on. Another common classification is related to commercial properties. This slide shows the estimated secondary property tax levy impact for this classification. For a commercial property with a county assessor valuation at $1 million, it is estimated that the property owner will pay an average of $899.73 per year for the 20-year GEO debt for a total of $17,994.67. This table provides an example of how the allocation of the tax levy compared to the two propositions the voters will decide on. The city intends on maintaining a secondary property tax at or below 0.8000 during the 20-year period of our GEO bond debt should the voter approve one or both of the propositions. The city is able to do this because as existing debt gets paid off, it creates capacity to issue new debt, allowing the city to direct that portion of the rate to the new GEO bonds. The city has been successful in maintaining rates below what was shared in previous publicity pamphlets since the 2004 GEO bond elections. Proposition 441 is investing in City of Flagstaff wildfire suppression, stormwater flood mitigation, and wastewater treatment infrastructure. The bond question is, shall the City of Flagstaff be authorized to issue and sell general obligation bonds in a principal amount up to $57,285,000 for the purpose of replacing wildfire suppression engines and water tankers, increasing capacity of floodwaters within spruce wash, increasing wastewater treatment capacity at wastewater treatment facilities, and implementing energy efficiency upgrades at wastewater treatment facilities. Wildland fire is a great risk to the city of Flagstaff. As climate continues to change, the community has experienced wildland fires in greater size, frequency, and impacts such as the museum, tunnel, and pipeline fires. Pictured here are two types of specialized wildland fire equipment that the bond would replace. Specialized fire apparatus is required to protect Flagstaff from the threat of wildland fire extending into neighborhoods and infrastructure. Flagstaff's current fleet of wildland fire apparatus are experiencing significant downtimes of up to 35% due to breakdown. This reduces the ability to effectively respond. A delay in response to wildland fires allows the increased fire growth and subsequent impacts to public and firefighter safety. Proposition 441 would fund $2,185,000 to replace aged wildland fire apparatus that were built between 1997 and 2001. The replacement apparatus will provide reliable, safer, and more advanced equipment to protect Flagstaff from wildland fire and its devastating impacts. The 2019 museum fire burned the spruce wash watershed on the flanks of the Dry Lake Hills and Mount Eldon, drastically altering the soil conditions and vegetation cover. It will take many years for the landscape to heal. Climate change, with its periodic extreme weather events, lead to flooding that exceeds the existing drainage capacity. Subsequent monsoon rains scoured out the drainage, moving debris, ash, and mud through Flagstaff neighborhoods. This creates both an environmental and public health risk, in addition to private property and public infrastructure damage. The Spruce Channel Master Plan is still under development and will guide improvements along the wash. Alluvial fans constructed on forest land slow down flows and disperse sediment before stormwater enters the wash through Flagstaff neighborhoods. 
a series of linked projects are needed to alleviate flooding throughout the wash. Much work has been done, but more work is needed to add capacity through the channel and at road crossings. Channel capacity will be increased to handle near three times the original design flows. So far, the current mitigation measures have kept the neighborhoods from flooding during 2022 summer monsoon season. Work will continue over the next few years to manage this new flow demand. Over the past 30 years, Flagstaff's population has nearly doubled while the wastewater treatment plants have operated with the same equipment at the same capacity. It's time to meet current demands and poise the city toward future advancements in efficiency and wastewater treatment. Flagstaff has two water reclamation plants. The Rio de Flag plant has a liquids capacity of 4 million gallons per day, with the Wildcat Hill reclamation plant treating up to 6 million gallons per day of liquids. Wildcat Hill handles all of the solids treatment for the city. We need additional digesters, which process solids handling. Digesters take wastewater solids and convert them to the methane gas, water, and carbon through a biological process known as anaerobic digestion. The primary wastewater pump station moves wastewater through the treatment process. Storm events and other factors can vary flows significantly. The pump station will be reconfigured with different size pumps that can combine in tandem to maximize efficiency and ensure the treatment process manages the flows occurring at the time. We'll add two cogeneration units that use methane, a byproduct of the digester process, and convert it into electricity. This electricity can provide heat or emergency backup power. Water reclamation takes a lot of energy, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Backup emergency power in case of electrical grid outages provides resiliency to climate change and keep the plants running when fire, weather, or power outages occur. The Rio plant will add a smaller set of turbo blowers in the needed combination with the existing larger blowers to provide the right amount of aeration for the anaerobic digestion process. Effectively managing the wastewater treatment process is good for the community and the environment. Water is a precious resource. Keeping it clean and responsibly handling waste products benefits residents, the landscape, and our underground aquifers. Energy efficiency projects save money and poise the utility toward future advanced treatment processes. Proposition 442 is titled, Creating Rental and Home Ownership Opportunities for Residents of Flagstaff. The bond question is, Shall the city of Flagstaff be authorized to issue and sell general obligation bonds in a principal amount up to $20 million for the purpose of redeveloping city-owned housing to create additional affordable rental units, repurposing existing available buildings into rental units, incentivizing the private sector to incorporate affordable rental housing into new developments, and expanding the home buyer assistance program. Housing affordability is often a topic of conversation in the community, but what does it mean? As defined by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, housing affordability is when a household spends no more than 30% of their pre-tax income on housing and housing-related expenses. Many Flagstaff residents are surprised to learn that 65% of all Flagstaff households are low to moderate income. On the next slide, you will see how these numbers impact our community. When a household spends more than 30% of its gross income on housing and housing-related expenses, by definition, they are housing cost burdened. As you can see in the graphic on the left, 45% of all households in Flagstaff are housing cost burdened, with 57% of renters and 27% of homeowners experiencing this condition. The graphic on the right gives a snapshot of housing prices and income over the last 10 years. During this time frame, the median sales price of a home in Flagstaff has increased by 166% to $615,000, and rent for a two-bedroom apartment has increased at least 66%, while the area median income increased by only 36.5%. This disconnect between housing prices and income directly relates to 45% of Flagstaff households being housing cost burdened 
and needing some form of assistance to achieve housing affordability in both rental and home ownership. Having a variety of rental and home ownership opportunities in a community is connected to positive effects in health, education, economic development, environmental outcomes, and jobs. Proposition 442 is expected to provide a path forward to increase housing affordability for broader community demographics in Flagstaff. As mentioned earlier, there are four efforts in Proposition 442 to create additional rental and home ownership opportunities for residents of Flagstaff. Listed first is redeveloping city-owned housing to create additional affordable rental units. The City of Flagstaff owns and operates 265 units of low-income public housing and the land underneath the units. There is a current opportunity to redevelop these housing sites to increase the number of rental units on the same land. The approximately $5 million will be leveraged in partnership with the private sector and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. When complete, the redevelopment is expected to result in a minimum of 530 rental units, more than double of what exists now. The new units are likely to serve various income groups, including above the low income defined groups and will not be part of the public housing program under the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. It is important to note that no current residents of public housing will be permanently displaced. The second effort specified in Proposition 442 is repurposing existing available buildings into rental units. Funding in this area will allow the City of Flagstaff to partner with private developers, nonprofits included, to repurpose existing and available buildings and spaces into rental opportunities for the residents of Flagstaff. Housing units are not the only community benefit this activity will provide. In addition to the creation of an estimated 75 rental units, currently vacant space in Flagstaff will transition to occupied homes. The third effort specified in Proposition 442 is incentivizing the private sector to incorporate affordable rental housing in new developments. Funding will be utilized to incentivize private developers, including nonprofits, to incorporate affordable rental units and market rate developments. This investment is anticipated to create an estimated 400 to 500 new rental units affordable to the residents of Flagstaff, in addition to the market rate units in the new developments. The last effort specified in Proposition 442 is expanding the Home Buyer Assistance Program. Funding in this area will expand the current City of Flagstaff Home Ownership Assistance Program, which provides eligible first time Flagstaff home buyers with down payment and closing cost assistance for the purchase of a home within the city limits. The current funding is limited, not guaranteed on an annual basis, and benefit is limited to around 10 households a year. The assistance is provided in the form of a repayable loan that, when repaid, will be utilized again to help additional Flagstaff households. Approximately 305 households will be assisted with the initial funds. As the funds are repaid and utilized again and again, it is expected that the benefit will continue to assist future home buyers. Proposition 442 will benefit Flagstaff by creating additional rental and ownership opportunities to support Flagstaff residents who want to continue to call Flagstaff their home. Local funding means local rules can be established. Local funding has the ability to assist households not eligible for traditional housing programs, as most programs use federal or state funding that limits who can be assisted to low-income households. While oversight and expenditure of bond funds to ensure community benefit ultimately rests with City Council, the 13-member Housing Commission will provide oversight and recommendations to City Council regarding the use of bond funds. An annual report will be published to keep the public informed on the use of bond funds, and the programs will also be monitored annually as part of the City's existing budget process, which requires a public hearing and annual City Council approval. For more information about general obligation bonds and Propositions 441 and 442, visit www dot flagstaff bonds 2022.com or you can use the QR code displayed in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Thank you for your time and attention today.